Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by the teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the fowler snare. Hallelujah. The snare has been broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, my subject today is when the Lord is on your side. When the Lord is on your side. Father, we ask that you would bless your word to the hearts of your people today. We know it is already blessed, but cause it to bear fruit, oh God. Cause someone who is doubtful, who has been skeptical, who has been apprehensive about committing their lives to you, help them, oh God, to make a decision today to trust you. Because when you are on our side, there's nothing that the enemy can do to, to, to hurt us or to destroy us eternally. And we give you the praise for this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. As children, we often played team sports. Whether, in my case, in the West Indies, we played cricket. All the men who grew up in the West Indies can tell you about cricket or soccer, what we call soccer back there. Some of you may have played baseball here in the United States or football or basketball, but we often had to pick or select our various team members. I remember very often playing a game of cricket and we often, often we had a captain and the captain had to bring, would bring all the, the players around them. And the two captains of the two teams would pick and have the pick to, to choose the persons that they desire to have on their team. I remember regardless of the team you were on, there was always that player that everyone wanted on their team. So whether it was baseball, there was someone who was an outstanding hitter or pitcher, whether it was cricket, there was a good batsman or bowler or a person who was a, a good person on behind the wickets that we wanted on our team. We wanted an outstanding player, one who would win us the victory on our team. A few months ago, there was a documentary called The Last Dance. And all of you who are basketball fans know what I'm talking about. I was, I was, I just ran into it because myself, I have to apologize or I have to share with you. I'm not a big, a big fan of the, of the team sports. I love uh, the, uh, the track and field more myself, but I saw the last dance came on a few months ago and it highlighted the successes of the Bulls basketball team from Chicago. I watched the last few episodes because it was so intriguing. It was so exciting. But they could have given this last dance title a different name. They could have called it the Michael Jordan Show. The reason why I say this is because every few seconds, the name Michael Jordan, the name came up. Because Jordan was being uh, highlighted. The spotlight was upon him because of his outstanding skills and uh, ability to win games. I was not much of a basketball fan, of course, like I just said, but all I wonder, all I could hear was, uh, each time I went to work, was I heard the guys on the job talking about uh, the, the plays and the moves that Jordan made in his various uh, games. They said that Michael floated in the air they said that Michael uh, made the jump, the jump shots like no, like no one else could. He made the fakes and the moves that no one else could keep up with him as he made these moves on the court. They talked about the three, the three pointers that Michael Jordan was core from way behind the three point line. Opposing teams often had two or three players, as Jordan would play, to cover him to try to keep him from getting to the, uh, the, 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 ball, the hoop to score the points. Uh, opposing members would use their elbows. They would use their shoulders. They would even use their knees to try to hurt Michael Jordan because they knew that if they could get him out of the game, that they would have a good chance at winning the, the, the game or even the championship. Every team wanted Michael Jordan because, that, because they knew that with him, they could be winners 
as he play, if he played on their side. Our oldest son, Adrell, and my wife will be probably laughing now. Our oldest son, Adrell, idolized Michael Jordan because it was during the, the 90s, from 1991 onward to the late 1990s, that he too was in high school and he loved basketball. You could hear uh, Adrell playing basketball in the early hours in the morning, practicing late at night. To, he was on the ball team on, in, in his high school, and he wanted to be Michael Jordan. He was no more than five feet five, but he was convinced that he was going to be the next Michael Jordan. This man had such a great impact upon his life. Now, uh, King David, the author of this psalm, was in this frame of mind because King David recognized that if you have a champion on your side, hallelujah, David recognized that Israel needed to have the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on Israel's side when the opposition came to inflict harm upon Israel. It is believed that David wrote this psalm soon after becoming king of Israel. He conquered the, he had conquered the Jebusites. He had captured the fortress of Zion, which will later become the city of David, where he made his home. And it is believed, as we read the text in 2 Samuel in chapter 5, you will see there the accounts of what really happened. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, you don't have to turn to it. In verse 22, provides a little glimpse of the narrative of what occurred. The Bible says in verse 22, once more, the Philistines came up and spread out in the valley of Rephim. So David inquired of the Lord and he answered, hallelujah. It is so wonderful when the enemy comes against us for us to inquire of the Lord. I want to challenge you today. That each time you have a difficult decision to make, each time you come upon a, a situation that seems to be beyond you, to inquire of the Lord. Because if your heart is right and if your ears are listening, the Lord will speak back to you. So the Bible says that God answered David. He says, do not go up straight, but circle around behind them and attack attack them in front of the poplar trees. As soon as you hear the sound of marching in the tops of the poplar trees, move quickly because that will mean the Lord has gone out in front of you to strike the Philistines army. So David did as the Lord commanded him and he struck down the Philistines all the way to Gibeon, to, G to Gezer. The Philistines were the arch enemies of Israel. And here in this one text, the Bible lets us know that the Philistines attacked David in his fortress on two occasions. But David did not take it for granted that God was with him. David had defeated them once before. And he said, God, should I go up again to fight against these Philistines? And the Lord said, yes, go ahead. You will have success. It is believed that this has been declared, that this is when David wrote these words. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, they would have been swallowed up. He said, Israel would have been torn to pieces. Israel would have been swept away. I do not know if you have ever been the underdog in a battle. I do not know if you have ever gone to court with all of the odds against you. I do not know if you have ever been into an examination room and you knew that you did not put in the proper uh, preparation or you knew that there would be trick questions to trip you up to cause you to fail that exam. I do not know if it was on your job where you were looking for a promotion but somehow you had someone who kept standing in the way, trying to oppose you. You can identify with what David was here because David went up against the, guy, the giant Goliath at one point of time. David was the one who was expected to be defeated. David didn't have a long sword like Goliath. David didn't have a long spear like Goliath. David couldn't even carry the armor that the king offered him to fight Goliath with. David, the odds were all against David. 
but David knew what it is, hallelujah, to have the Lord on his side. And this is why he penned these words. God wants his people to understand that when we trust God, when we put our confidence in God, he is on our side. He is on our side, not for our defeat, but he is on our side to bring us to victory. Oh, glory to God. The first experience we learn about the Israelites uh, concerning opposition against them is in the book of Exodus. When they were being oppressed, the Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, verses 8 through 12, then the king, then a new king came into power who, who, uh, to whom Joseph meant nothing. And he came to power in Egypt. Look, he said to the people, the Israelites have become too numerous for us. Come, we may deal sh shrewdly with them, or we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, will join our enemies to fight against us and leave the country. Throughout the history of Israel, Israel has had oppression. Israel has faced opposition by, by major powers, major nations. We know in the 1930s and 40s, how the Germans, the Nazis came up against the Israel, the, uh, Israel and attempted to annihilate them under Adolf Hitler. The Bible says back then in the early part of Exodus in verse 11, chapter one. So as a result of, of the, the, the opposition that they had against them, they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor and they built uh, the built Python and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. The Bible says, but the more, hallelujah. I love this but here. But always tells us that something uh, is about to change. Something is about to shift. The Bible says in verse 12 in Exodus chapter 1, uh, that but the, but the more they oppressed, the more they opposed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians uh, came to dread the, the, the Israelites. What happens with God's people when God is on their side is instead of us becoming less in number, we multiply in number. Instead of becoming fearful, we become strong, hallelujah, in our God and in the inner man. The Bible says that the more the Pharaoh oppress the Hebrews, the more they're multiplied, the more the stronger they got. When your enemy can't get rid of you, the Bible says in that passage of scripture that the, that the, the, the Pharaoh dreaded the Hebrews. They dreaded the, the Hebrews. In other words, the hate that they had for the Hebrews turned into fear. The hate they had that they had for the Hebrews turned into fear. When your enemy cannot get rid of you, the hate that they have for you often turns into fear. And because the Pharaoh hated the Hebrews, because the Egyptians despised the Hebrews, he decided he would kill them. So the king told the midwives, the king told Shephara and Pura that when they go to help the, the, the Hebrew ladies give birth, that during childbirth, if the baby is a, is a male, to, if the baby is a female, to let the females live. But if the baby is a male, to kill every newborn baby boy. But thank God. The Bible lets us know that the midwives feared God. The midwives feared God. And this is why we need to know who are the ones being sent to help us when we are in need. We need to inquire whether the ones who say they're coming to help us are really coming to help us or if they're being sent to, to really kill us and to destroy us or do us harm. But like David said, the Lord was on their side and the midwives reported to the Pharaoh because they feared God. The midwives 
protected the baby boys and allowed them to be born. And when Pharaoh inquired of the reason why these baby boys were still being born, the, the Bible says that the midwife says that the, 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 the females of the Hebrews are so healthy that before they can get there, the babies are born. But we know what the truth is. God was on the side of the Hebrews. God was preparing to build a nation called Israel. And he had the protection. He had the foresight to, to send people who were sent to harm his people to protect them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But about this time, a young man by the name of Moses was born. <coughs> Hallelujah. And he too had a death sentence placed over his head. But like David, the Lord was on his side. The Lord caused Moses' mother to put Moses in a place, in a, in a brook, in a river, where Pharaoh's daughter came down one day and saw this little child in this basket made of pitch. And she loved the child. And she took the child into the palace and raised her as her owner. And uh, see, when God is on your side, he will cause even your enemies to, to protect you, to build a cocoon around you. And they wouldn't even understand what they're doing. But not only did the Lord protect Moses and brought him into the house of Pharaoh and had him grow up under the, the Egyptians, the Lord told uh, uh, the, told the ladies around to go and get a, a person to take care of this child, to, to be the nurse for this child. And who did she go and get? Who did, who did Miriam go and bring? They went and brought Moses' own mother. Hallelujah. So Moses, here's Moses, being brought up in the palace of Pharaoh, my God, by his own mother. It does not matter where we go. It does not matter what we achieve. Hallelujah. It does not matter who you yes. are. It doesn't matter who your guardian is. Hallelujah. If God has a plan for your life, yes, and I want to say God Preach has a plan for your life. If you're alive today in this 2021, Jesus. I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. God has allowed you to be here for a purpose. Yes. God allowed Moses to live through this season of murder this season of slaughter because he had a plan for his life hallelujah hallelujah one thing these four last years these last four years has taught us is because you have been in, invited to sip wine and eat caviar in the king's house it does not mean that the king is really interested in your welfare it does not mean because you're sitting on rubbing shoulders, shoulders with the bourgeois of our society, it doesn't mean that they really are with you. Because if the Pharaoh was really with uh, Moses, and if he understood who Moses was, he would not allow the oppression of his people the way he permitted it. So most kings are concerned with two things only. They're concerned with power, and they're concerned with wealth. And this is all Pharaoh was concerned about, power and wealth. But God was with Moses, and Moses grew in the knowledge militarily of the Egyptians. He grew in the knowledge also of his history. He knew who he was. And this lets us know it doesn't matter where we go in life. It doesn't matter what position we hold. It doesn't matter what country we go to live in. We must never forget where we came from. We must never forget who we really are. Because it was in this knowledge, this knowledge that Moses' mother imparted to him that you are really a Hebrew. You are really an Israelite. That his heart was moved with compassion to help his brothers and his sisters who were facing oppression. Bible lets us know about a thousand, a thousand years later, in 479 BC, that the people of God were in a place called Susa in the Persian Empire. And at that time, at 479 BC, a young Jewish girl named Esther was, had been recently uh, elevated to, be, to succeed the former Queen Vashti to be the queen in Persia. At first, she and her cousin thought 
that it was because of her beauty. It was because of her good manners that she had got this position. But in time, because Mordecai kept his integrity and he did not hobnob to a drifter by the name of Haman, that all the Jews came under the threat of annihilation. Esther did not have a clue of what was happening. All she knew is that because she won a beauty contest, she was now the queen in Persia. But word got to Mordecai, her cousin, that Haman wanted to destroy all of the Jews in Persia. And thank God he had the presence of mind to head to where there could be help. And God was with him as God was with Esther as well. And so the story lets us know that Mordecai told Esther that who knows if this is the reason why God has placed you on the throne for such a time as this. Who knows why God has us here on this first Sunday of 2021 for such a time as this. God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for your household. God has a purpose for your skills, your talents, your abilities. See, when the Lord is on your side, he will cause you to be in positions that you never thought you would be able to occupy. When God is on your side, he will cause you to go places that you thought you will never be able to go because the Lord is on your side. Esther brought the plot of Haman to the king. And to make a long story short, Haman was hung on the very gallows that he built to kill all the Jews on. You see, when the Lord is on your side, it doesn't matter the plot. It doesn't matter who plot. It doesn't matter the means of the plot. It will be exposed. It will be brought to nothing. Don't you think for one moment that we are here for no purpose? It could be at your workplace. It could be in your neighborhood. Maybe God has is raising you up or wants to raise you up to have influence in the social structures of our nation, whether it's in the area of righteousness or in the area of social justice, whether it's in the area of helping the poor and the needy. God has a plan for your life. Because when the Lord is on your side, you will find that there's nothing that you won't be able to accomplish in the name of the Lord. If we walk in the spirit, if we become mindful of the voice of God, as David listened to the voice of God, and the Lord told him that every battle, there are times when battles need to be fought differently. There are times when battles have to be fought with the sword, but there are other times when battles have to be fought on our knees. There's some battles that we cannot fight in the courthouse, but we can get on our knees, hallelujah, and we can, be, we can call on the God of heaven. We can call on the God who has promised never to leave us nor forsake us, and he will see us through in every situation. When the Lord is on your side, no devil in hell or on earth can stop or hinder God's plans for you. I think of the life of George Floyd. The death of George Floyd brought, brought more people together, brought more people from different ethnicities together and shed more light on the issue of injustice and police abuse than any single political party, any single president, any senator or representative has, ever, has been able to bring light to this situation uh, before the death of this one man in his death he did more in his death than all he did in his life approximately 500 years later after the persian event a man who could not hurt a fly a man who could not hurt a fly simply because he made every one of them was hung on a tree outside of the city of Jerusalem. All this man ever did was feed the hungry. All this man ever did was cast out demons out of those who were oppressed. All this man ever did 
was open the blinded eyes of those who could not see. All this man ever did was bring people back to life who had died. He was misunderstood. He was hated. He was rejected. And ultimately, he met the worst death that could ever be, be met to be, to be experienced. During that time, he met the death of crucifixion. This man was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Hallelujah. This was Jesus Christ who came into the world. Hallelujah. And to die for the sins of all of humanity. But you know what? When the Lord is on your side, David prophesied that he, that God will not allow his son, to, the body of his son to see corruption. And the Bible lets us know that on the third day, there was a rumbling in the earth. On the third day after Jesus was put into the tomb, hallelujah, glory to God, there was a shaking, there was a movement. And the Bible says that just as was prophesied, Jesus, uh, no one had to raise Jesus from the dead. Jesus said, I laid my life down and I am able to take it up again. Jesus rose from the grave because the Lord was on his side. In fact, he is the Lord. He is the Lord. It seems, it seemed like the enemy of Jesus had their final heyday when Jesus died. But gee, they thought that they would never hear the name Jesus again. The religious people of the day were jealous of him. But Jesus rose triumphantly on the third day. When the Lord is on your side, you'll find that you will be the lender and not necessarily the borrower all the time. God will place you on the top and not leave you on the bottom. Hallelujah. God will make a way as he did for the children of Israel through the Red Sea. God will make a way as he did for Daniel, as he preserved him in the lion's den because they wanted him to worship a false god. God will stand with you in the fiery furnace as he did with the three Hebrew boys. When God is on your side, hallelujah, you will be amazed to see what he will do on your behalf. In closing, there's a people in this country who have been abused and mistreated like no other group or ethnicity in our nation. They are more likely to have harsher prison sentences than other ethnicities and people of other groups. They are more likely to experience or to receive the worst medical provisions and supplies than any other group. This group of people are more likely to face harsher sentences and even experience the death penalty for crimes that they did not commit than any other group in our nation. This group of people have the worst birth and child bearing a, a birth and child mortality rates in our nation. This group has the worst, live in the worst housing conditions. This group receives the worst upper educational opportunities. They live in the worst conditions. They have the less opportunities to burst through the glass ceiling and they receive the less pay. They receive the less pay compared to other ethnicities. I wonder who this group is. When they try to be industrious, and as it said about them, pull yourselves up by your bootstraps. What other groups do is they bomb their cities. They destroy their banks. They burn their houses. They redline their tongues. And they are always under oppression. Now they are the most vulnerable group in this season of the COVID pandemic. But there is something about God and his people. When he is with you, hallelujah, he never leaves you and he never forsakes you. When the Lord is on your side, hallelujah, his people will always overcome a crooked and unjust system 
our situation. When the Lord is on your side, the plots to annihilate you will always be exposed and revealed. Hallelujah. Haman was hanged on his gallus that he built for the Jews. Judas was never able to get a good night's sleep after he betrayed Jesus. He couldn't live with his conscience. You may have been on the underdog for a long time, but I want to show you it won't be forever. Right now, you may be facing situation or circumstance where you seem to be the underdog, but the Lord has the word of God has come to let you know today. God wants you to know that when you when the Lord is on your side, hallelujah, you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. But finally, it is good to have the Lord on your side. But I want to ask you a question. Have you chosen? Have you chosen whose side you're on? You have to make the choice which side or whose side you're going to be on. We have to decide whether we're going to stand with fear and be destroyed in the Red Sea or whether we will move on with Moses, hallelujah, and enter into the promised land. I like the words of Joshua who said to Israel, choose you this day whom you will serve on this first Sunday of this 2021, hallelujah, your success or your failure, your life or your death, your demise could be determined by who you will choose, whose side you will be on. We have the choice to make. Now I know that when God is on our side, we have success. But even when God is on people's side, Sometimes they want to go back down to Egypt. God was on the side of the Hebrews when they came out of Egypt. But many of them complained and they grumbled in the wilderness. They said, oh, we miss the melons. We miss the onions that we used to eat down there, living in the mud huts, being beaten by the Egyptian soldiers, being abused, being ripped, being ravished. People love material things more than they love eternal things. But I've come to let you know that God did not allow Jesus Christ to remain in the grave because he was on his side. And when he brought Jesus out of the grave, hallelujah, David experienced it. David was once the underdog and God brought him out as well. If you today are here and you have never given Jesus Christ the opportunity to be your Lord. If you have never been on the Lord's side, you have a choice to make. And I want to say that you will be held accountable because today you have heard the word of God. You can never go from this service and say, I did not know. I never heard about Jesus. I never knew there was an opportunity for me to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says now is the acceptable time. None of us have tomorrow put aside. Even in this pandemic, where we hear the numbers of people who are dying is only growing, going up higher and higher. The older folks are dying, and even the younger people are dying. We heard of a 41-year-old new congressman was just elected. He wasn't even sworn in yet. At 41 years, a male, and yet he succumbed. Um, he came to this COVID pandemic. None of us have tomorrow put down, but when the Lord is on your side, hallelujah, you will see that God will make a way for you. The right choice always costs, but the wrong choice always costs more. Listen carefully to this true now, this, this, this statement. The right choice always costs, but the wrong choice always costs more. And God is calling us. God is calling us to come up higher. God is calling us to go deeper in our relationship with him. If you already know him as your savior. And if you do not know Christ as your savior, you may have to give up some of the old friends that you had. You may have to give up some of your old practices and habits, some of your old ways. But I assure you, if you choose the right choice, if you choose Jesus Christ, hallelujah, if you choose the side of God, you will find that you have success this 2021. 
Choose God's side this year and you will see the results that God will give you. Let's bow our hearts before the Lord even now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word today. Your David reminded us as he experienced the victory of God who was on his side, as he experienced the victory of the Lord who was on his side, he was inspired to pen these words that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, God, if it had not been for you on our side, when we experienced death all around us, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when we were told we don't have a job to go back to, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, when we were forsaken and deserted, and those who we thought we could trust turned their backs upon us, Lord, if you were not on, on our side, where would we be today? And so, God, we come today giving you thanks for this new year, 2021. And we, Lord, we want to commit our lives to you afresh. Lord, we want to rededicate, we are rededicating our lives to you afresh, asking you to saturate our minds and our hearts and our surroundings with your presence. For God, we know that when you are on our side, hallelujah, we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And so, Father, we thank you today for this precious new day. We pray, God, for individuals who will commit their lives to you. If you desire to commit your life to Christ today, if you desire to have to be to, to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that the Lord is on your side, all you need to do is the prayer, simple prayer of commitment. He will come into your life. He will come into your space. He will come into your situation. And God will turn your circumstances around. Just pray this simple prayer with me today. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for speaking to me through the Holy Scriptures, through your servant. I invite you into my life, oh Jesus. Save me, oh God. Transform my life. Give me hope. Cause me to experience the life that comes through knowing Jesus Christ as Savior. And I thank you for doing it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. If you pray this prayer today, especially if you pray this prayer for the first time, please send us a text. Send us an email. Let us know about it. And we will be happy to share with you further concerning the steps that you will need to take that will cause you to grow strong in the Lord, that will cause you to flourish, and that will cause you to be productive in the kingdom of God. Once again, we give God praise and thanks for everyone who joined us on this first Sunday of this new year. Don't let it be your last time being with us. We'll be back again next Sunday. We'll be on tomorrow at 12 noon. Look for the emails. We'll be on again on Tuesday night as we begin a brand new series of studies. We'll be back here again on Thursday evening at 9, from 9 to 9.30. And don't forget to send us your email with your name so that we can update all of our information and we will be able to send you your tax statements as early as possible in this new year. God bless you. Have a precious day in the Lord, recognizing that when the Lord is on your side, hallelujah, Amen. there's nothing the enemy can do to destroy you. God